Do you ever wonder how people power their tiny home on wheels? We do it with 2,200 watts of solar on our DIY ambulance camper. Today I want to cover the much requested solar panel setup on our rig. A lot of people have asked about the drawer slide that they've seen in photos and everything. And today we're going to cover how this is set up and how we fit 2200 watts of solar on our ambulance roof. Just a quick little history here. We have been on the road for three years and are currently traveling the world in our self-built ambulance camper. We originally started with 750 watts of solar up top, but after some time, we decided to install AC and the 750 watts just did not keep up. So we went back to the drawing board. I designed this giant drawer slide back here and it allowed us to fit 2200 watts of solar on the roof when we're parked. The solar panels we're using in this setup are 550 watt bifacial monocrystalline panels. We picked up these panels online. They were actually from a warehouse. We paid about $200 a piece for these 550 watt panels, which is an amazing deal. The interesting part about the bifacial panels is you can actually get up to 30% more power from the underside of the panel. Now, in reality, we probably only see about 5 to 10% increase, and that's mostly from the panels that are slid out over the front here. You'll get reflection off of the hood of the vehicle, some of the windshield, and we do notice that 5 to 10% increase on these panels compared to the panels that are on the roof back behind. You can see on the underside, the cells are actually pretty much just see-through um, and the light just reflects off and you get that increase from the bottom side of the panel, which is very cool. The 550 watt rating is actually only for the top of the panel. So in reality, we have technically more than 550 watts per panel if we're getting that reflection. As you can probably see behind me, our roof is packed full. We have storage boxes, we have a full-size air conditioner, we have a max air fan, and then we fit the solar panels on top of here. One of the things that I started with when we originally built uh, our rig was the roof rack. I used 8020 extruded aluminum, and I built this perimeter that that perimeter is the only thing that attaches to the roof. The perimeter does attach with little L brackets at certain spots all the way around. And those are the only holes that needed to go in to the actual vehicle. Everything else attaches to the perimeter. So when I need to modify anything, like I did switching from the 750 watts to this solar setup, all I had to do was unbolt the beams from the perimeter, resituate everything, and bolt everything back together. I didn't have to put any new holes in my roof, which is huge. One of the challenges I did have was trying to find a 90 inch drawer slide, which it is possible, but trying to find one heavy duty enough and also something that wasn't gonna break the bank, that was difficult. So what I did was I used unibearings from the extruded aluminum. For these unibearings, I used two. This one here is attached to the upper part that actually slides and it, it slides in the permanent track here and comes the whole way back. This helps to allow uh, a little bit of less leverage on the backside. This front one, this one stays in place on the bottom part of the roof rack and the panel slides through it. So having one on each direction helps so it doesn't have that extra leverage to break uh, in wind or anything like that. I have been using this setup for about a year now, actually probably a little more than a year and these are still working like they're brand new. What's nice is even if there's a little bit of dirt that gets in the track, I have not seen any issues. And even if it does get a little sticky, you can spray some water in there, rinse everything out, and it's good as new. One of the things I was worried about was the leverage that the heavyweight panels would put on this slide. Um, and actually it has not been an issue. We have used it in fairly decent winds. You do see a little bit of uh, fluttering in the panels, but it's really not bad and nothing that had worried me. 
So one of the things that I did make sure to do was to leave a little extra back here so it's not all the way out to the edge. So the panels are roughly 90 inches. I left about maybe 12 to 16 inches back here. So it does have something to sit on and it's not just hanging out here all the way at the edge to really allow that leverage in any wind or anything. The panels are heavy. So making sure you have that extra stabilization is key. For the giant panel here, this is basically just four pieces of extruded aluminum spread around to make a perimeter. And I have one down the center as an extra support. I did take uh, bolts. I'm kind of frustrated because I ordered stainless steel and they're all rusting. So obviously they weren't stainless steel. But what I did was in the frame of the solar panels, I put riv nuts. And if you're not familiar with a riv nut, it basically uh, goes in. You use a little tool to pinch it tight and it creates a little threaded portion in there. So I made a bunch of those around the perimeter of each panel and then I used the bolts and I threw bolted through the extruded aluminum. Uh, I thought about attaching just to the extruded aluminum but I figured through bolting would be a little bit stronger and more secure especially as we do a lot of off-roading bouncing and this just has to be secure. The one thing I would love to do and maybe you guys can help me out because I have no idea about actuators or anything like that but I would love to make this automatic to where I could set it up and push a button inside and the panels would just slide out. If you have any details on how I might be able to make that work please shoot me a comment down below and let's see if we can make something happen. My biggest hurdle is since we are using unibearings the panels have to slide perfect because there's unibearings on this side and there's unibearings on that side. If we push from one side too much, it'll actually wedge and it'll get stuck. The downside of having one in the center, if I used one long strut, is that it would then shade these panels and that's not something that I really want to do and lose that power. So I would need to have two synchronized, one on each side, in order to be able to push this panel out and bring it back. Like I said, if you have any ideas, please let me know in the comments. It would be awesome to get that set up. When the panels are back in the stored configuration, you can see they nest really nice on the roof. Now we do have a little bit of an offset. The bottom panels stick out a little bit. And that's because we have a roof fan uh, for our shower up front that I couldn't move and those bottom panels couldn't slide forward. I took advantage of that and actually left the fan and left the cable runs that go through the roof up front. That also helped to give me that 12 to 16 inches of overlap up front to help with the leverage like we talked about earlier. But the bottom panels, you can see a little bit here, really when we're driving, they don't do anything because they're just far too shaded. The top panels, however, still gives us 1100 watts of solar as we're driving down the road. Or if we don't want to deploy anything, which we do a lot of times, we don't even have to deploy the panels, we're still getting 1100 watts of power just with it in the stored configuration. As far as locking the upper panels in place, you can see we have these little levers. I have one of these on each side. These go into the unibearings and it helps lock it in. Super easy to lock. And like I said, I have one on each side. And then as an extra precaution, I also have one in the center. This is just a simple uh, pop latch. It goes right on and it just so happened to fit right in the extruded aluminum slots, which was really nice. I have not had any issues with these panels being insecure at all. I feel perfectly safe driving down the highway anytime I do make sure and I triple check that they are locked every single time. That is the key to make sure you don't forget to lock them. Even if you didn't, I think they would be okay. Maybe if you slam on your brakes, they might come sliding forward, but ultimately I think you'll be just fine. I do have these panels set up into two different charge controllers. We're using 150 by 85 Victron charge controllers. The top panels are on one controller and the bottom panels are on another controller. This makes it really nice to give us dual zones and also a fail safe. So if something were to happen to one set of panels or one controller, we have a complete backup system and still would be able to have 1100 watts of solar as a backup. And now you may be asking, why do you need 2200 watts of solar? Well, after having 750 watts to start and adding an AC unit to the back, it really made us see that 750 watts was not enough 
to keep our batteries charged and still be able to run the AC. So having the 2200 watts, we also upgraded our AC, which I'll do another video on that at some point. But this 2200 watts allows us to run AC, our Starlink, all of our electronics without having to worry about power, which is awesome. It is one less thing you have to worry about on the road. One of the other things is we both do still work while we're on the road. So we do consume a little extra power with both of our laptops and running Starlink all of the time. Now, of course, to go with all of this solar, we need to have a lot of battery and that we do have. We have 1200 amp hours of 12 volt lithium batteries. We are using EG4LL batteries. Um, they are server rack style batteries and we absolutely love them. We started with 800 amp hours, decided to add another one at so it gave us 1200 amp hours. After being on the road for almost three years in this beast and traveling to over 14 countries, I feel like we finally dialed in our electrical setup and we are super stoked with it. We haven't had any issues and if you're looking for that ultimate power solution, this may be the option for you. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop us a comment below. I will happily help answer anything that I can. Really hope you enjoyed this video of our monster electricity setup. And until next time, we'll see you later.